Hi, I'm Michael Drigalis with Confluent, and in this module, we're going to be looking at how stateful operations work in KSQL DB. In the last module, we looked at stateless operations where KSQL DB was just changing data in motion, but it wasn't remembering anything as it went. Things get a bit more interesting under the hood when operations require state. The first thing we're going to look at is materializing a view from a stream. You can see that this stream is similar to the one that we created in the previous module, but this time we're going to do something different. We're going to create a table called average readings. It does what it sounds like. It will select each sensor and take the average of its individual readings. It's going to materialize a view so that I can query it. I can ask questions about it, just like a regular database table. I'll slowly step through what's going on here. I have a few rows. The first one that comes through is from sensor one with a reading of 45. The server reads that row and commits it to the table and the average is 45. The average of 45 is of course 45. The next few rows do the same, sensors four, two, and three. These are all the initial rows for each key. But now I get a row for a key that I've already seen. Here is sensor three with a reading of 52. These materialized views are incrementally adjusted. This is what makes them so powerful. KSQL DB doesn't have to take the average of all the numbers again. It just takes the last average and incrementally factors in the new data. This is what makes queries against this table so fast. It's what you'd call write time amortized. It's doing the smallest possible thing to make the table correct as it receives new data. So the average of 52 and 67 is now 59.5. I can see how this plays out with the rest of the rows. Now, this materialization is actually stored locally on KSQL DB's servers. This uses RocksDB, an embedded key value store that transparently runs in process. This is what gives you a copy of fast access to the data. But you'll notice here on the right that I have a stream called changelog. What's going on here? KSQL DB is creating an audit trail of all changes that have occurred to the materialized view. I can see that I have sensor one that was updated to 45 and then to 68.5. Like any other stream, change logs are topics and they're stored durably in Kafka. We'll talk a little bit about why these change logs are useful for fault tolerance, but from a programming perspective, this is the backbone of KSQL DB's query layer. KSQL DB gives you two ways to query your data, push and pull queries. Pull queries are what allow your application to run a typical database query against your table. You can ask questions about your data and get an immediate response. If I ran a pull query and then asked for the average of say sensor four right now, I would get 75. But if I ran a push query, which is a streaming query, it would allow my application to subscribe to the changes for any given sensor. So if I ran a push query subscribing to say sensor three, I would get several results. I would get 67, 59.5, and 52. I would get three results. Now something that's tricky about distributed data processing is something called data shuffling. To be able to aggregate the data that you're interested in, you have to get it all to the same place so that you can combine it together. That is why partitioning in Kafka is so useful. When I take an average of sensor readings, I need to take all of the data for each sensor and get it into the same place so that I can reduce it into one number. I have a slightly different query here. I'm still taking the average of the readings, but I'm grouping it by area. Because my original data isn't partitioned by area, I need to shuffle my data around. KSQL DB does this automatically with something called a repartition topic. This is invisible and it's internal to KSQL DB and happens on your behalf. Now I have a table with three rows, wheel, motor, and engine. What it's done is that this first stage of the query has put all of the rows for each key onto the same partition. KSQL DB will inject these repartition topics into your program's execution whenever shuffle is required. So what's up with these change logs that we looked at earlier? They're useful for push queries, but what else do they do? Imagine what happens when you lose a KSQL DB server. Suppose that the disk is lost with it. I mentioned that the materialization for a table is kept locally on the disk with RocksDB. That means that it's effectively gone and can't be used anymore. When that happens, a KSQL DB server needs to take the old node's place and recover the materialization. It's able to do this by reading the changelog topics out of Kafka to restore the state. Here are all the changes that we saw in the previous table. Engine had an average of 67, and then one of 40, and then one of 45, and so on. The table is repopulated until it reaches the end of the changelog. At that point, the latest state of the table has been recovered. You might notice that only the latest row per key matters. Any earlier rows are overwritten by the later ones. Anything earlier is a stale piece of information from the perspective of recovery. KSQL DB is able to optimize this away with compacted topics in Kafka. Compacted topics discard all records except the latest per key. 
This means that you won't grow your change log indefinitely. It is proactively purging the data for you. In a real world scenario, you would see something more like this during recovery. You'd have a sparse key space with maybe one row per key, and each row would be played into the server as fast as possible. This is what allows KSQLDB to have fast recovery from a completely cold state. It's playing only the data it needs to into its local stores.